What is going on, guys? We are back with another episode in our Nighthawks Relocation Fantasy Draft franchise. It's about to be week four, and we're trying to forget week three. I'm probably going to get myself a Neuralizer so we just don't, you know, we just don't know. I will say, couldn't remember what the name of that thing was. Looked it up on Google. Uh, I think I seen a woman holding something that wasn't a Neuralizer. It was also purple, but... Beside the point, let's get right into week four. Going up against the 49ers. I have no idea what any of these rosters are. That's kind of the points, you know, the fantasy draft. And one thing that is for sure is we get to play at home for the first time all season. All, I mean, history, really. Because once again, this is the history of the team. This could be the way this team looks for the next hundred years. Or the next three years when this, you know, whole thing fails. And they just kind of pretend like it never happened. It's like, hey, the Giants are back. What up? Where have you been? But obviously... Here we are with a new week. Let's take a look at the players of the week, which we probably gave up another one of. I suppose we did get one ourselves a week before. Yay! More players of the week given up. I love it. The Panthers with multiple. Sam Darnold had one of the greatest quarterback games probably ever. Godshaw had a very good game for the interior force fumble. Recovery, a touchdown, three sacks. I mean, look at Kalamon, though. I mean, really good yards. Touchdowns aren't super great, but bam! 10 interceptions on the season, and I can't really blame him. I really, I mean, he hasn't been perfect, but, you know, at the end of the day, let's say you're the best quarterback ever. If you're getting insta-pressured, you're going to do nothing. But when you're not the best quarterback ever, and even if you had blocks, you might be bad, you really can't tell because you do have that pressure and you just can't handle it. I will say, speaking of pressure, Chase Claypool has not handled it well either. He has been pretty much irrelevant throughout this thing and I'm not saying I want to trade him but a guy like him could go for like you know a, a low 80 left tackle or something like that maybe with like a third round added on which would probably be a lot better for us as once again I can't say that he would but Fayoko has been really good or was really good in preseason he's kind of built similarly he's like a poor man uh, you know poor man's clay pool but at the end of the day you never know if he could hit the ground running so I'm just saying, there's a possibility, but we are, of course, very far away from that trade deadline. As of right now, haven't really seen a whole lot of upgrades for these youngsters, but also haven't seen a whole lot of a success for anyone, really. I will say Drake Jackson has been on a little bit of a tear, might have about four or five sacks already on the season, four and a half, and we've only played, what, three games? That's actually impressive, and it's not just coverage sacks. There's a few of them, maybe, but... He's actually been way more uh, productive, way more successful against his opponent than Brian Burns even. I imagine upgrading these is probably the smartest, right? Upgrading offensive and defensive personnel, like coordinator, 20% less. So then when you upgrade all this, it's, well, a lot of them are actually already done. Sweet. Love it. That was not a waste at all. I also hope you can't hear the fan in the background. I have a ceiling fan going and uh, it's cranking right now. Got to get that thing going for the summer. It's officially, even though it's spring. Anything over 60 degrees to me is summer, so it's officially hot girl summer. I am in my micro bikini, ready to you know post some photos for OnlyFans. Uh, but looking at what they do well, and honestly, it's not a lot of anything. Carson Wentz, not the worst player in the world. You know he's got potential, but we'll say they don't look great. Their deep passing touchdowns is high, but overall they don't look good. I suppose. See, it says outside run, but like. Nobody ever runs on the outside on us because the interior is just, even with Jordan Davis there, not particularly great. Looking at their defense now, actually a pretty good unit. Uh, they do have Trayvon Diggs. Probably should have looked at their actual roster, of course. Chase Young, as you would expect. Inside run just doesn't work for us. Short throwing is pretty much our thing, but I suppose medium isn't terrible either. So I'm going to go with medium just because short passing, I think, is kind of just like a gimme almost. It's really about trying to develop a little bit deeper down the field, that mid-range game, and uh, also, obviously, the run game, which haven't really done a great job at either, to be honest. But maybe have some upgrades and then just hop right in. And speaking of that man, Drake Jackson, going to go with a finesse upgrade. Gets to 74 overall. Plus two, please. That, okay, plus one. It's not quite plus two, but he gets to 80. 80 finesse. Not bad. Hopefully, it doesn't ruin him now because for some reason, some thresholds actually hurt the player of course, his morale is now down one, but his overall is at least a 71 overall. Run blocking plus two, which puts him at 70 plus for both. One away from uh, 70 plus for pass block power. Maybe that makes him better. I don't know. Uh, Sky Moore, a guy that actually had a pretty good week last week. He's been decent for us. 
I think medium route running. I do want his catching up, though. I think I'm going to go slot because he is kind of like built like a slot receiver a bit. Uh, slot upgrade gives us plus two to catch in traffic and agility. A medium route and a short route. That's pretty good, actually. We'll take that. Almost to 80 in the catching department. Uh, Lucas Niang, a very important piece to this puzzle as well. 70 overall as well on the offensive line going agility style. Plus two to pass block. Not bad, which puts him at 72 pass block now. Uh, and he's not a terrible finesse blocker. So, I mean, developing a little bit. We're, I mean, we're, we're making plays, I suppose. And then Brian Burns, I guess, even though he's been really bad, is I suppose speed rusher is the way to go, which gives him nothing for speed rush, but it still makes him a better player, I guess. Javian Hawkins, maybe a little early in his re-sign process, but you know what? He's been okay for us, and even if he turns out to be a backup, a three or nine million dollar deal is amazing for us, and not terrible for a guy that may not even be a true starter or even true backup in this league. As far as some of the other guys go, there's a couple of important ones down the line, but no one too crazy, right? No one's super crazy. Obviously, Patrick Peterson may just be too good to, or too bad to keep or just straight up retires, so we'll have to wait on him. There's a couple of guys in here that are, uh, you know, pretty young, but I suppose a couple of guys that are questionable to return. So two final things. We got to take a look at their roster, and then I want to take a quick look at the sliders. And a few people have asked. I haven't really changed a whole lot, but... Just so you know, Carson Wentz, of course, the quarterback. We've seen that Aaron Jones. We've seen that as well. He's actually pretty solid as well. Uh, a little surprised that he isn't a little bit better in spin move since his juke move is 95, but still fair enough. Very good. Uh, you know, 84 trucks, 86 stiff arms, pretty ruthless. Oh, speaking of ruthless, DK Metcalf. All right, Tariq Wollen, this is the reason we brought you in. Literally just DK Metcalf, that's it. Once you're done, you can retire. Uh, they also have uh, Jahan Dotson, who I think... Probably should be starting, but they got Brian Edwards and Traquan Smith instead. Uh, looking at Hawkinson, 88 overall for number 88. Trent Brown, really good left tackle, solid left guard. Uh, not a great center, not a great guard, right guard. And what is that right tackle? Do they have an injury? No? Okay, I mean, sure. Chase Young, we've seen that as well. Not happy to see it, though. Chase Winovich, uh, not a bad player, but not super great. He's about average. DTs are rough, but like what happened last week. Marcus Golden is super weak and slow. Slow middle linebackers. Logan uh, Wilson's decent, and Davion Taylor's a backup. Trayvon Diggs is an X factor. Could become a problem with really good catching. Not that it seems like it matters what your catching is against us. You just catch it anyways. Or Warrior. I mean, outside of Diggs, they don't really have a whole lot of speed going on there. Trayvon Merrick, decently fast, and then Curse, really slow. This absolutely has to be a competitive game win or lose we cannot get blown up by this team the other team you know they had their, their you know a couple of players that were kind of tough to beat but this team looks really not great although i will say their big three on offense is pretty damn talented so maybe maybe not but we should be able to score points at least whether we win or lose we should at least score points limiting them is another thing as far as gameplay sliders go these are what we are rocking i have uh you know pretty much everything basically on 50 i mean there's really not much more to it i really want to put punt accuracy at 100 but it just doesn't matter of course the big issue with that is the ai just punts so badly in the game and obviously we can punt great no matter what so i, I try to keep the accuracy high so then the ai does better but I mean, they'll be at the 50, a great chance to pin us. Fair enough if you get a touchback. You know, you're not going to be perfect every time. But the ball cannot go out of the 25, okay? That just doesn't happen. I could punt the ball further than that, assuming I don't get blocked before I get it off. But, you know, if that's not the case, I legitimately could maybe... I don't know, actually. I don't know what 25 yards looks like, but I got it, I mean, probably close, right? With a 1.2 hang time, it just gets there instantly. And it's actually like so, like nobody expects it, so it's impossible to stop. The ball bounces all the way to the one every time. I'm a god. But here it is, the unveiling of the Nighthawks Stadium. A lot is going on today. Home game, the first one. First time wearing the home unis. I gotta be honest, the stadium, the rings look pretty cool. But I don't know what all those gray buildings are on the side. That we could have done without of. I mean, I don't know how many luxury suites we have here. But apparently the answer is a freaking ton of them. Uh, yeah. Um, where do the luxury state? They're back. Am I missing something? 
I could have sworn when we just looked at the overhead, it didn't look like those were there. I don't know, dude. It is what it is. We've got about 4 billion advertisers because we absolutely can't afford this place. But, hey, you know what? Nighthawks football. We already got one win. Could pick up a second. We'd be in an okay spot at 2-2. Two and two. We can deal with 2-2. Two and two. Like I said, all that matters is we got to be competitive in this game. And more importantly, at least competitive on offense. I think the offense needs to play well this week. As it's a decent defense, but it's nowhere near as good as some of the other defenses we've seen, specifically pass rush wise. And then the other thing is Kellen Mond is going to be on a short leash. This could be the week he gets benched. He's going to still stay the starter because, once again, a lot of it hasn't been. Wow, we're not that bad. Okay, relax. But a lot of it hasn't been his fault. But at the same time, if you're not going to improve and you're not going to at least play turnover free or as turnover free as possible. Maybe just move on anyways. But we will not be able to see that offensive attack because we're going to be on defense to start this thing out. was debating on going with the dome, but there was a lot of shadow issues. I want to actually be able to see, and I think the fans also agree with us. I think that's uh, one of the biggest things fans wanted is to actually be able to see the matches. Carson Wentz, you know, completion percentage isn't crazy great, but the touchdown to pick is decent. Yards are all right. You know what? We're going to show Carson Wentz. We're not playing around. We're going to come out. With the midi right out the day, or right out the gate, and he is gonna react to that perfectly right out the gate. As they're gonna gain about nine yards, it might have been Ward on the play, and it's not Ward; it's Sean Wade. Things are hard to remember. Of course, they look like they're gonna run it here, even if we know it, even if we blow it up. <laughs> We're gonna blow it. Not easy to stop. We're in okay spot. We need some pressure, though. He's literally just going to run. Doesn't need to, but he goes out of bounds. I mean, you can't really blame Carson Wentz for keeping that play alive and maybe just instead of going for the first down. Because, I mean, in fairness, he did have that look and just couldn't get the feet down. And Aaron Jones almost just scored on what could have been a fourth and two. Instead, it's a first down, three-yard gain. And that uh, taunting? Anyone want to calm Aaron Jones down throwing the ball at people? Relax, you're also one and two. We might suck, but you also suck. How about that? Underneath, we're getting torched by Braylon Edwards. Huge hit by Cox. And it's not Braylon, it's Brian Edwards. I mean, at this point, bring back all the old players. Give Get Heinz Ward out here. Get Braylon Edwards. Just get them all out here, dude. It'd be easier for me to remember their names, honestly, as Jordan Davis is down. Jordan Davis, I mean, tripping? Kind of. I don't know what you want to call this, but um, it definitely looks pretty wrong. I mean, I suppose it got the job done, kind of. I mean, you raise him up. I don't know what's happening. Right, so they are absolutely gaping us early and often. We're going to be looking for the Blitz, and we're going to drop off with Tyndall, and we can't even get over to the Metcalf. Woolen gets destroyed. So far, it has been Metcalf versus Woolen for the most part, but obviously we've been running a little bit of zone coverage too, so can't just primarily have him on him, right? Like, you do have to sometimes pass him off a little bit. There's Brian Burns to get it stopped. And speaking of, only gets beat by Metcalf for a gain of 12. Metcalf so far having a pretty good year. 234 yards, two touchdowns. Pretty good week last week. And I'm going to be honest, even though I'm uh, optimistic, I'm also a realist. I think it's going to continue. I think he's going to have another good week. As Nisral Dean gets out there, can't get him, but Tyndall makes a great play. And their left guard, Vera Tucker, is injured. Only a yard gain and a potentially huge injury on that offensive line. Things are looking up. Yes, injuries are, are positive for us. As Stearns is going to miss. No! Gains about eight. How can we not get a grab? Third and one. I mean, you kind of have to run commit i mean they're they're kind of showing you run every day of the week if they go outside i'm gonna be screwed here and they do but at the same time we overloaded that spot and we absolutely needed 56 to do better there that's awful tutu atwell still on the kick return game until he dies <laughs> basically and honestly at this rate it won't be long man's been getting a lot of touches across the board and here comes the offense don't really want to look at those Kellen Mon numbers. I mean, the completion percentage is actually pretty top tier. Unfortunately, a lot of those completions are kind of going to the other team. It's not quite how it works, but it's kind of funny joke. And Hawkins going to wait. Gains about four. Really need my guard to you know, maybe move it along a little bit faster. Just, just a tad bit. Just a tad bit. And who's the guy that's in the zone? Or the ex-superstar? As Hawkins going to fight. Only gains two. 
offensive line is getting absolutely worked early on this one. Uh, I mean, nice gain of four, but I mean, that one we just got destroyed. Tutu Atwell on that out, for that little RPO look. He is open. The throw leads him a little bit out of bounds, but Tutu Atwell turned that into a nine-yard gain. Merrick looking like Sherman there. Not like it was a long stint, but it's a, a long enough stint to be remembered. And here we're going to go right back to the ground game. You know, I know the ground game's not great for us, although look at the start. Nine-yard gain, had a chance at the first down and more. I think it was a smart call to go for it all rather than just getting the guaranteed first down. Uh, you can almost use this as a setup play too if you really wanted to, and I really do like Atwell. But, you know, just because it doesn't work, we do have to get it going anyways. And we're going to take that shot. And that's going to obviously be intercepted. Why wouldn't it? Tutu Atwell just cannot burn an old Coleman. Justin Coleman, who's got like 88, 89 speed at this rate, doesn't beat him at all on a very beatable route. An in-cut deep just gets beat. I mean, I don't know if it was a bad throw. It looked like a good throw from where I was sitting as Aaron Jones is breaking tackles, and he's going to score. Wollen, dive. No. 66-yard touchdown. And it begins again. I mean, Aaron Jones here is looking tackled. Tyndall, who's having a really good season, misses the tackle. Fair enough. It happens. He's the first one to get to him. Slows him down. Anderson's bringing him down. And then Woolen bounces him. I mean, this is just ridiculous. All right, new rule. Don't ever throw it to anyone unless they're 10 yards wide open. I like the new rule, to be honest. That's pretty open, but once again, inaccurate. The Niners, who have a 14-point lead on us, are now maximized in the zone. They can see our intended pass target. They can see they can catch better. I like it. This is stuff that won't make it harder for us at all, obviously. Like, just maybe it just shows the first person open or the closest. Is that 2-2 Atwell? And just a terrible throw for Mond. Mond is looking to get benched early in this one. He is He's really gearing up for it. I mean, this is bad. Their players accelerate faster than expected as well. That is a wide open clay pool. It's a pretty trash throw on top of it. Gains to the 49, though. I mean, you're already down 14 to 0. It's a short yardage situation. You can't play defense, anyways, it seems. So, 2 2 Atwell underneath slips it for a gain of about 10. Good teamwork. By good teamwork, I mean on their team because they kind of like helped us in for the first. Uh, let's go inside zone instead of the read option. Just give it straight up to Hawkins. And he actually stops us dead. Wow. Good blocking. Beautiful blocking on that one. I mean, that's just perfect. Of course, why would they expect a back-to-back -back inside zone? I don't know why you would. I don't think they will. And we barely get it. Nice bounce off from Hawkins. Gets kind of upended. Gain of three. So far, not having the start we were hoping for. But if you're a fan of consistency, it's the start we were expecting. There's a wide open running back and another missed throw. I mean, Mon hasn't been this bad all like season long, but this has been bad. All right, this is almost unforgivable bad. That's really underthrown, which leads to a massive hit stick on a smaller running back. The pressure, dude. I get it, right? I get it. There's a lot of pressure physically and mentally. But you got to stand up to the freaking pressure, dude. You got to wake up. Nice cut move for Hawkins. Gains about four. Three. I lied. But even though I can't say it for sure that it's really being a great run game, we are committing to it, and it's at least contributing as Hawkins gain, gain him out another three. I mean, in theory, this should make it easier on the quarterback. The quarterback should be feeling a little bit better, you know? He's like, hey, I don't have to throw it as much. And we're going to... Dot that in there, and that's a really good throw from Kellen Mond. Picking up the first down to Sky Moore. Second quarter. Nice drive. Can we finish it, though? It's like a RPO-type look. I kind of want to just hand this off. Hawkins going to follow the block. Skeen's about three. My man's is 3.0 yards per carry. Hard out here. But speaking of hard, we're going to try to run it hard with Kylan Hill. Second and goal from the three. Come on, boys. No blocks, nice stiff arm attempt, only gaining a yard. At the same time, would you see a pitch coming? They're absolutely not ready for it, but just just wait. As Hawkins is going to be down to the one, dude. No way. I mean, there's nobody on Sky Moore. If this doesn't work out, I'm going to cry. There's literally no one on him. That should be a rushing touchdown as well, I imagine. That works out. I don't know if they were just absolutely ready to stop the run. They believed in their cornerback number one over there hard, but... That was a mismatch. 
And on top of it, they kind of bottled the, the kickoff. They're at their own eight. Not that it's going to matter in the slightest, but, it, you know, at least it's starting a little bit back. Togi, I, we missed hard, but it should have forced him back in. Gain six, six for 93. It's only the start of the second on par to potentially break the NFL record. Nothing crazy. Second and four, why not run it again? They don't, but why not? Oh, we just got torched. We missed the hit stick. Nobody can tackle Aaron Jones for crap. First down. Go with the cover two nickel blitz here. Um, and it's kind of risky, but we just aren't getting anything without pressure. Over the middle is pretty open. Caden Stearns with a tackle just about right at the 50. Carson Wentz dotting us up. Going to come with a heavy front to try and stop the run here. It's obviously something they've been trying to run, you know, a lot of. And Tyndall can't get out there. Aaron Jones breaking off a tackle. One to beat. Jabril Cox with the tackle down to 20. I mean, we can't tackle for crap. We just simply can't. Again, there's a lot of DBs that are being the first at the punch, but you got to do better. I don't care. Let's go with Tyndall against the tight end. Could be a curl look. And it is. Wade gets beat, and everyone's just kind of moving the wrong way. Touchdown, Traquan Smith. 21 points. Up the middle from the 25-yard line, JV and Hawkins trying to cut it back. Cannot get it. Loss of one, gain of one. It's kind of more on that deep look. Obviously, it's something we'll look at, but we're obviously looking for the underneath if we can get it. The tight end, Cole Turner, turning it into a 13-yard gain. A lot of misdirections. The running back kind of dragged that out as well. And First down, Claypool kind of has that outside leverage. I mean, I like it. This is kind of a deep setup play, though. And we just can't get it out there. I mean, that route... I thought it was a deep in cut. I think I might have misjudged that. Got to get out of there, though, because, I mean, it just wasn't going to happen no matter what. If that did happen to be a deep in, I probably would have gotten the throw there, but you know, had no chance to actually take the shot that we had a look at. And Cole Turner is wide open and another miss. Of course, there is physical pressure, but that throw didn't say it was caused because of pressure. You know what I mean? So, I mean, what can you really say? How can you defend him? We're just going to have to dump it off to Cole Turner. Set up a better punt, I suppose. But, I mean, that's just easy first down territory if we, we get that throw off to him. Instead, it's 21-7, to 7, their ball. Matt Ariza getting a, a decent punt off. Can't tackle at all. Good job by Browning, though. All right, 418. I don't remember who gets the ball at half. Don't really think it matters, to be honest. I think it was. Uh, I think we will get the ball at half, in fairness. Davis is going to get tossed to the side, and we're going to get a coverage sack. Tokii getting that one. A loss of six. Not bad at all. Knocking him out of the momentum a little bit as well. Tyndall covering the tight end. Looks like a screen. And that's pretty good coverage for Pat Pete. And they're going to call what is Patrick Peterson actually doing? We went for the interception and he pass interfered him. Well, that could have just blown the game. No no cap on a stack. Third and 16. Instead, 55 yards down the field. Patrick Peters make up for it. Yes! Thank you, Pat Pete. All is forgiven. Brian Burns, after all, does live, apparently. I thought he was dead. But he actually exists. Nice cut inside. Once again, they're just closing on the ball so quickly. Not even, you know, averaging three yards per carry at this rate. It's just been not a good, per, you know, situation for us. Could be looking for a quick throw to the running back. Maybe had it. Tight end's pretty open. First down gains nine. Kellen Mond's missing some really bad ones. But, you know, he's hit a couple of okay ones. Obviously, that's not really one of them. But I'm just kind of excited that he just got the damn ball to someone for once that wasn't on the other team. And there goes Sky Moore, that... That drag kind of made the bump. Good, nice cut move. Not that it really matters, but gained 16. I mean, we could close this to a 14-21 to 21 halftime score, which would be really big. Once again, I understand their thinking. You know, Padre Peterson just got destroyed the last play. But, you know, at the same time, you're kind of giving a guy that just blew something a chance to redeem himself. And do you really want to take that chance? They did, and they probably shouldn't have. Quick throw to Hawkins, perhaps? No. But the tight end open again. Cole Turner, man. He's he's one of our best players. He's actually really good at getting open. As slow as he is, he's a mismatch somehow. He's just a freak. 
I like the streak look from Tutu Atwell, but the safeties really haven't played poorly. I lied. Underthrown, but he still gets it there. Touchdown. I will admit I did kind of throw that a little low because I didn't want him to overthrow it. I felt like Tutu got just open enough to be able to throw it pretty much anywhere as long as it's not inside and get that. It was true. It happened. And we're only down seven. I don't know what the hell happened there. That guy jumped down on that hard. He saw a little boy-like figure, and he went full Epstein. He did not care. Nice try by Gillisby. Um, fellas, thank you. Got to the 36. is unfortunate, but it's not a touchdown, which I will say for a moment there looked very possible. Let's go with Sean Wade. It's going to be a screen. All over that, and he's going to just chuck it to the ground smartly. And that's a miss. Good spin by Metcalf to avoid a huge hit, but... First down, once again, Tariq Wollen hasn't played absolutely poorly. Can't really blame him getting beat by a, a physical specimen like Metcalf when you're a rookie isn't the craziest thing. Three for 42, and once again, a lot of them aren't in man coverage, so he's doing a pretty good job over there. It's a good play by Melifonwu. Clean tackle gains three. Actually, it might have only been two. Got that. Pat P, he's, he's his own man. I ain't touching him. That guy's good. As Drake Jackson's fighting. And Sean Waite. Oh, my God. We just got done in by a slow tight end. That's despicable me, too, in theaters. I actually don't know how many of those movies exist. Probably a lot more than three. Jordan Davis on the double team. Gets the spin, but it's going to lead him out. And there goes Carson sliding. Might have used that timeout, though. Ten seconds remaining. They try to hurry up, and they just their receivers are taking too long to get back. And they're actually going to kick the field goal, which, I mean, isn't the worst spot for us to be in. But it was kind of a weird spot. Like, I couldn't call a timeout, obviously. I had to let them sort it out. But it's so harsh to go into halftime with three timeouts. It's so rough. Unless you're winning, which you're not, obviously, in this situation, it hurts. Maybe gets a setup for the, uh... Nah, we're not going to get it. Although, I mean, I assume that is against us. But if it's not, just saying... A late hit on the quarterback. I'm just saying. Claypool's on the other side, but, you know, he should be able to get there in time, assuming we block off the right side. Can I actually put Hawkins over there, please? I guess not. And Claypool will not get there. That ball's overthrown, too. Dropped, but Claypool, actually, the ball went right to him. If you kind of paid attention to it a little bit more, it's a tough one to go for, but it had a chance. I obviously throw a 2-2 two -two in there because he's the most central, but <laughs> also the lowest chance to get it. Looking at the yardage, not terrible. It's just we aren't doing well in the ground game as usual. To our focus, I just can't do run. Yeah, we will, actually. We need to, we need to develop that run, and we're going to stop the inside run as he's gaining 20 yards a carry. Down 10, though. Great resilience to be down 14-0. to Take it back to a 10-0 to game, and you get possession. So... In theory, it's a 7-3, to three, you know, 7 or a 3-point game right now. In theory, you know, if you believe in yourself as much as I believe in us right now. I believe it. I believe 2-2 Atwell is going to have a huge gainer here. I mean, they don't look like they're covering it. There's 2-2. It's a good throw. 2-2 Atwell beats him. 2-2 Atwell with a cut move. Can't get it. Sky Morewood had a chance to block as well. But that's an amazing start to the second half. That route, that crosser look was beautiful. Uh, I don't want to run this because they, they're kind of bringing up a lot of heat here. Not really, actually, but Hawkins is going to get a little bit of room, and he's getting in about four. The three to four yard, man, they call him. Always packing three to four, just like me on the best of days. Second and seven inside, and they pretty much read that all the way. They did not fall for that that fake. Turn to the end zone. Don't know how, what I feel about him, but who expects him, of all people, to go to the end zone? And there is Hawkins. It's a dot down to the two. On the run, Mond with a dot. With all that pressure as well, that is amazing. And here, they're kind of ready for this. I still think Claypool can get in. I think that guy is going to come in. Maybe not, but we trust that we... It's kind of like a thrown up play, if you will. We kind of let him come back to it. Good play. That's exactly where I wanted the ball to. Down three. Four for four, 72 yards and a touchdown. Some big 
time throws in that as well. That was a beautiful drive. San Fran looked like they were all over us, and all of a sudden now, looking beatable. Oh, my God, Browning. Special teams play of the year. Obviously, didn't lead to any touchdowns or anything, but if we end up winning the game because they can't score here, maybe. Maybe has a can to see for it. Let's go with the blitz. Oh, I guess not. Oh, that is, I mean, what can Woolen do there? Didn't even go for the pick. Went for the swats and just holds on. Traquan is a bigger guy, I suppose. Not bigger than Woolen, obviously. There's no receiver on their team other than Hawkinson that's technically bigger than you, you know, height-wise. Davis working through the double team. Can't really get it. Huge hit by Anderson. Probably doesn't change a whole lot, but it is what it is. Oh, we got to get across. Tyndall tries. No, he went with the wrong guy. Aaron Jones takes it to the 27. Eight for 156 in this one. Yeah, it's going to happen to you. It's unfortunate. And that, they just beat us hard. Don't go down the middle of the field, though, and they're only going to gain about four. That's that's, an, that's a kind of a win for us. <laughs> Considering the, the situation we found ourselves in for a moment there, not the worst, and they're going to just beat us hard on that. And he kind of cut moves. He almost looked like he was going to give himself up, which... I mean, Aaron Jones is obviously feeling it. This line is insane right now, but one square hit, and that lead disappears. We're not going to run the, the, the run commit, but we are going to blitz, and we do hold them. All right, and it's only a yard gain. That's that's okay. So we're going to bring as many players as we can. Toki eyes getting handled. Get up there, and nobody's going to bring him down. Touchdown. Drake Jackson jumps on his back doesn't matter we're also absolutely going for way too many hit sticks but i just feel like the way our tackling is you kind of have to hit them hard and maybe just pop them to get them down as cole turner is going to get a nice little gainer for about 12 so we need cole turner kind of our prime route as well they have digs over there on hawkins this could actually be perfectly covered up and there goes turner again and he's getting about 12 again All right we went for the inside run but let's let's try an outside run for once Maybe cut it back inside if it's there, which, I mean, wasn't there, but I don't really know how much the blocks are holding them off the edge anyways, so eh. you pick your battles. You pick your battles, like you really say. Curl route from Claypool, maybe. Going underneath with the drag again, and, of course, just a really weird throw. It was like he led him upfield and too low. I don't even know what that was. That was just terrible. Uh, I think I'm going to put Sky Moore on a uh, curl there. Going to go underneath to the running back, and he jumped that curl. Hawkins is still going to the 36. Nice little find on third and eight. They kind of backed him up a little bit. They were looking at uh, Hawkins, or, or not Hawkins, Sky Moore hard on that and ended up hurting him. I kind of want to block from Eboa. Claypool's route's really good, and if he doesn't get open, we might be looking at... Now we're going to go to the tight end, Turner. Nice little truck. Gains about six to seven. Eight, actually. Second to two. Hawkins is usually good for two to three, so let's you know, test that out. Nice little move. Gains about four. Maybe five. Now Tutu Atwell is injured blocking. Of course, we are a team filled with slot wide receivers. But in this case, it's actually Fioko off the edge. Or as the number two, I suppose. As uh, Hawkins gained about two, speaking up. I wanted to go to the right with that, but it would have been Turner instead of flipping sides. And they're not on it again. Sky Moore gets popped, gaining apparently nothing. I do not know how he gained nothing on that. There's no mom like movement at all. Fioka, the big man, could be giving him a chance at the end zone here. Claypool, that's close. Catches it. It's fourth and one, dude. We really haven't made a stop. Do you trust Ben Mason, the fullback, who really hasn't played a whole lot? I suppose you do. They're not really ready for it, so screw it. Ben Mason. Ben Mason. Easy clap to the 11. Got the slam from Claypool. Do have Hawkins kind of... Oh, Hawkins. Claypool. Perfect throw. Touchdown, Claypool. Hawkins had it, but he got bumped out the gate. I don't know. He would have had the touchdown, I think. But either way, going to be back down by three. And that will lead us to the fourth as well. Give Kellen Mond his credit. He's, I mean, kind of answering the call this game. And that's a hard call to answer when you're looking at the other side and your defense is giving you nothing. 
And that's pretty good tackle. I mean, he gains three, but can't really peel off of any of the players because all of those guys are dangerous yards after the catch, guys. So kind of just pick your poison. Melifonwu, the taller cornerback. I mean, he's got two to cover. Woolen, please! Oh, the ball's overthrown. Jesus. Third and seven. Get some pressure, boys, please. Togiai gets the club move, and he's going to bring it down for the sack. Let's go. Elijah Vera Tucker, I think, is still injured, and even if he isn't, he is a young guy himself. And we finally get some pressure, leading to a fourth quarter punt. Down three. <laughs> Not going to block. Darting gets taken down to the 45. Two Atwell is back. This play has been pretty good for us this season. Let's hope it's good again. Obviously, be looking for Hawkins if it's not. And there goes Cole Turner. Nice block. Let's go. Slips off as well to the 22. A massive game so far for Kellen Mond. I mean, it was looking ugly. So many missed throws, and then out of nowhere, it just starts hitting. And this is a pretty good play for us. I don't really like that inside handoff. And there goes Cole Turner again. Perfect throw on the money. Decent route. And Cole Turner's having himself a day. He's loving it. Once again, they are a bit of a slower linebacker squad. So this is kind of the game we were hoping for from him. It's running up the middle. And Hawkins going to cut it back into that tiny lane. Gains about seven. Actually eight. I don't care who gets the touchdown, but it would be nice to get Hawkins a touchdown before we leave this match. But it is what it is. Up the middle. Cutting it back. Picks up the block. Fighting to the one. Now I really want to give him that touchdown. Read option. I mean, the way we're kind of set up, they've got to be careful of it. So it might just be a handoff all the way. And it is Hawkins' touchdown. I mean, it's not his fault. It's not his fault his yards per carry don't look good. He ain't got the blocks. The vision's been okay from him. Not perfect, but decent enough. He's slipping off of a few. There's only so much you can do. Come on, Davis. I know you got to work against the double team. And there goes Togiaya, and he will not get away. Sack number three on the day. My man. Let's go. Obviously, the double team's going towards Jordan, so it's, it's a little unfair to Jordan Davis, but still, it's a team effort. And underneath, has a really good coverage. Got to tackle him, though. Good teamwork, though. Nisraldine comes up for him. It's now going to be a third and 16. I don't feel great about anything under... You know, three-man rush, I don't really like, so going to go with the four again. Jackson gets locked up. Oh, gets a push. Gonna throw that early, and it's going to probably be a punt. I mean, he's just not able to lead the game in the direction they need it to go. Aaron Jones has been limited a little bit, and they've also been forced to kind of throw because, you know, they're choking the lead away here. It's an okay block, and Darden's pretty much going to get nowhere. Read option. I know Chase Winovich is a superstar, but, I mean, hopefully he just doesn't read it. He does read it. And so does... Who is that? Kwiatkowski? They had Kwiatkowski, right? Oh, Logan Wilson. That's who it is. No, that didn't work. <laughs> Back to the drawing board we go. I mean, this doesn't look good at all. I like the two ins. Well, deep. We're going to take it. Sky Moore. It's a little bit of a late throw. And he holds on. It's a touchdown. Ball Hawk digs. Sells the game. Skymore touchdown. I mean, he's on him, but that is a perfect throw. He tries to get, I mean, you literally cannot. Like, wh what can you do? Diggs doesn't even play that badly. That's just, I mean, that's just tough. That's just a tough break. That was actually insane coverage by Trayvon. A little surprised he didn't just go for the swat, but that's crazy. Sit down. Papi, chance for a two- Oh my god, he doesn't even jump. But it's a back-to-back games of two interceptions. Obviously not pick sixes, but interceptions nonetheless. Rain a lot of pressure here, which is debatable when you're in a situation where you're leading by this much. But the best defense for a pass attack is not allowing them to pass. And Drake Jackson's injured. No, 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 no. Arm two, which is obviously a massive part for a pass rusher. Osai is now in, even though Shaka Tony is probably better. Just Osai is you know, a little bit more ready as a starter. As Jordan Davis, he gets out there, but <laughs> there's only so much the athletic freak can do, you know. As bruised ribs, I don't know why he's holding his hand. Maybe check the head as well. Just to, you know, 
get all of our uh, barriers in order. Because we don't want to bury him if he takes a nap. And, you know, doesn't wake up. Jordan Davis with a tackle. Uh, you know, 191. Aaron Jones has just torched us, even though we've been trying to stop the inside all day long. Has not worked, but overall, looking good still to hold on for the victory. Like I said, I didn't feel great about their defense. He's going to throw that underneath. Oh, my. Good try. Really good you know, recovery by uh, Stearns there, who just got stiff-armed, continues with the play, and brings him down anyways. Tyndall. I mean, I, I don't mind these. Tyndall's a very athletic linebacker. Kind of covering two routes there. And one-on-one, Nisraldine, another athletic linebacker, kind of safety convert. I mean, they're getting down here, but the main goal, which is now just hits the two-minute warning to add on to that, is obviously to waste the clock. And they're doing a very good job for us right now. But they still have a chance, obviously. So pressing DK Metcalf might not be the best call. It actually worked out pretty well. Another screen, and we miss a Togi. A nice move. Aaron Jones did a really good job there. Got out of bounds and everything to the eight. But you know what we are? We're a bend, usually break defense. But maybe not this time. We'll see. <laughs> Undercutting that to the running back. Good tackle. Clean as can be. Tyndall. Once again, they have to get in the end zone. Well, maybe they don't have to, but for a good chance at it. Underneath, you got the tight end. You got a lot of people open. Metcalf's coming back too late, and he gets absolutely crushed by Nisraldeen. Third and goal now. And that's going to be picked. Nisraldeen denies. Tries to cut it back. Can't do it. And they won't even get a chance at the onside. They go up the middle. Hawkins again. Going to cut it back. Picks up the lane. And that will be the dagger. The Nighthawks with a massive bounce back after a an abysmal, absolutely abysmal performance. But ultimately, it was a pretty good team. I will say that uh, this team, once again, on defense wasn't really that great. I expected them to kind of give up some points. Maybe not as many points as they did. Uh, but, yeah, their offense, worse than I expected. Really good on the ground, but... Then they started feeling like they needed to throw it because we were kind of matching them a little bit. We were locking up some of their plays, and it ended up just – they ended up losing. I don't know what to tell you, but they're celebrating with us after a massive, massive choke. And we will move on to 2-2. Two and two. Actually, not half bad. Of course, Kellen Mond needed to answer the call. Job on the line, and what does he do? He delivers a beauty of a game. A four touchdown, I believe. One interception. Nearly 400-yard performance. Put some really good throws on. Obviously missed some really ugly wide-open ones, but hit some unbelievable ones. More than 400 yards. 432 yards. Four touchdowns, one interception. Once again, we tried to run the ball. Ran the ball 22 times at Hawkins, but only got 76 yards out of it. Obviously, Hill was one try. It was in the goal line, so it's a little harsh on him. But still, of course, Sky Moore. Oh, it should have been five touchdowns, actually. I forgot Sky Moore was... Kind of a backwards pass, technically. Cole Turner, 10 for 124. Could be on his way to a breakout. Atwell, not bad. Sky Moore, not bad. Claypool with two touchdowns. Yards are low again, but touchdowns are really good. And then Hawkins, 64 yards receiving. At least he got over 100. Togiai. I don't know if it's not, his name is Togiai. Togiai. I don't know what his name is, but I love him. Tommy. Tommy T. Interception again for Patrick Peterson. Nisraldine. Obviously, you know, locked up the game. Maybe didn't need to, but it's still nice to not have to worry. What ifs don't exist here. As our boy Tariq Woolen, who we're going to go for a slot upgrade, now has an upgrade. Played a pretty damn good game against Metcalf, to be honest. Three to man, two to tackle, and he's now 66 man, 66 tackle. Obviously, he's super raw still, but that height, that speed combo is filth. Obviously, if anyone's going to have a chance to become a star that wasn't really expected to, it's definitely him, which kind of defeats the purpose of wasn't expecting to. But 2-2, two and two, like I said, really good bounce back after going 45-7. to seven. Didn't change a single, single slider. Actually, I did. I lied. I, I actually dropped their run block slider from 59 to 54, and that didn't change a thing. Or whatever I changed it to. I don't know, but I, I lowered their run block sliders a little bit. Didn't change a thing. I might need to put the tackle back at 50 just because, A, we're missing every tackle, and B... I think no matter what, we're going to miss those tackles, but it's going to be even easier to miss tackles when you drop it. Obviously, we have theirs on 45 because all Madden, they're going to hit every tackle anyways. You know, we have some decently elusive guys, and outside of Cole Turner, we don't really break any tackles, right? And tackles are going to be broken no matter what, no matter how good or bad the players are. 
It's, it's just really hard to tackle, obviously, especially in the open field. But yet, the other team doesn't seem to think the same. Anyways, that was a beautiful performance. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this one. I had a lot of fun. And like I said, I'm hoping and expecting some damn breakouts next week. At least one, right? As we're going to go against Washington, who looks to be undefeated potentially in that game. But either way, most likely the division leader regardless. So a massive divisional matchup. And then right afterwards, same thing with the Cowboys. That's about it, though. Thanks for watching. If you guys enjoyed, maybe leave a like. Maybe subscribe if you're new. Follow me on Twitter, Jumpy Care. Second channel, Pierre Plays from non-matted videos, which I haven't uploaded in a little bit. Might actually upload one tonight. I don't have any plans for it, but I can easily just edit something. And by easily, it's it's actually probably longer edits than, than all the Madden videos, to be honest. But regardless, thanks for watching. I hope you guys come back for the next video. But until next video, see ya!